Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon video, except today isn't just any normal video, it's going to be a tier list video. Except this isn't going to be a tier list prediction video, this is going to be what the current meta is, based on all of the information and data that we have uh, collected over the past couple of weeks of EX3, with all of the different events that happened. So I do have the different data points for North American exclusive and English as a whole, including the other territories and regions. So let's just start off uh, before I even get into the tier list itself with uh, the meta and uh, all of the different data points. So as far as the North American meta goes, we have uh, currently for events 16 different decks being represented uh, and this is out of the top 16s. So there is just a lot of different uh, numbers floating around here, but the numbers you really should care about are the number of decks the point placement, and uh, the final standing. So as far as what these numbers mean, well, the number of decks is how many times that this deck was represented in the top 16. That's one data point that's pretty important because that leads to the overall meta representation. So the representation just goes to show how popular the deck is and how prevalent the deck is at being able to top. Then uh, the points placement is basically how well the deck did, so where it topped in the top 16. The higher positions that it got, like 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, was awarded more points than getting 16th, 15th, and 14th as an example. So it kind of weighs the position on where they were. Granted, this data point isn't necessarily 100% accurate because uh, when it comes to the actual score of the decks, some factors were outside of their control and a lot of the decks uh, were kind of uh, sitting at the same score, but was awarded a, a different placement based on the opponent win percentage. So it's not a true, true uh, accurate representation on how powerful the deck is, but it's as close as we can get based on the information that was given to us throughout all of the different events consistently. Then there was some math behind uh, combining the uh, deck representation, uh, number of decks, and point placement to be able to get the standing percentage, which is a more accurate representation on how strong the deck actually is. So this is, again, just the limiting it to the North American exclusive data. And then on top of that, we do have uh, the meta development. So uh, between all of the different events, this is kind of just how the meta developed as a whole. And we can see a consolidation towards uh, the top four and everything else kind of just seemed to struggle based on uh, the previous chart. But if you're just looking at sheer raw play percentage, this is kind of the breakdown on play percentage put in order in terms of representation for the English meta. But if we broaden the data set and data points a little bit more, we do get a bigger picture because there were some uh, data points that, that we could pull from from outside of North America, like uh, Latin America, Oceania, and uh, Europe. So uh, as we can see, things don't necessarily change that much. There is more decks being represented, but uh, again, it's not really changing what the top meta is and what really is defining the meta as a whole. Then if we include uh, those other events, we could kind of see uh, how the meta still develops. And again, it's not really changing the meta too much. It's just adding more decks into the mix to uh, have more of a diverse spread. And we could see that with 21 decks being represented in all of the English meta versus the 16 that was just North American based. But when we compare the two side by side, then we still get to see a good picture on all of the different decks being represented and how strong each of the decks is perceived to be. So that just leads into the question of, well, what actually is the meta? So as far as what everyone's concerned about and cares about, what are the top decks of this meta? So the top decks of this meta is going to be Metal Gururumon, Security Control, Bloom Lord slash Hydramon, and uh, War Greymon X Antibody. So why are these decks doing as well as they are? Well, as we saw with all of the images and data points that we have collected, that uh, Metal Gururumon X Antibody is just the best deck in the format. It has the most play percentage, it has the most win percentage, it's just obviously one of the best and strongest decks that's been in the game for a while. So this is where the meta kind of starts, it is because of how powerful this deck is. So how did this deck get into the state? Well, a lot of the decks that was going to be introduced uh, in a uh, 
BT-10, namely Crosshearts, so was a deck to try to check it because it had some pretty powerful security threats on top of having a good aggressive game plan. But with the limitations and bans in place, really nerfing the deck, it kind of took that threat away, on top of the fact that one of the other big decks from BT9, which was Alphamon, kind of checked to a deck like Metal Gurumon just because it had some pretty decent protection, let alone bounce protection, and it had a big blocker, usually with reboot on suspended, to just sit and wall out the Metal Gurumon deck from even thinking about aggressing. So uh, the two big decks that was going to check Metal Gurumon no longer were in the format, so it just made Metal Metal Gururumon stand out even more as one of the best decks, if not the best deck, in EX3. So what was a deck that people decided to want to pick up to be able to try to check Metal Gururumon? Well, it's going to be Security Control. So it only makes sense that Security Control is one of the best decks in the format, just because it checks Metal Gururumon on top of it checks a lot of other decks as well, just because of how annoying that deck is because of its control style gameplay. So uh, Metal Gurumon doesn't have protection against deletion and uh, various other abilities. It only has protection against deletion by battle. So this puts uh, a deck like Security Control in its favor, where it has alternative ways to be able to get rid of bodies that uh, Metal Gurumon can't handle, and a lot of various other decks can't necessarily handle either. So between uh, deletion, putting it into the security, and DP reduction, that's just three alternative forms of removal that it's playing with on top of any other types of removals it could be adding into the mix depending on the color splashes that you're incorporating into the deck. So it's a very wide and versatile deck, even though it's a very hated and boring deck because the deck really isn't doing a lot and it's not a super hardcore skill intensive deck. It's more relying on its security to do a lot of the work and you're just going to try to passively recover and kill anything that's on the field in the meantime while slowly chipping and aggressing at the opponent. But it is that kind of style of gameplay where it's forcing the errors out of the opponent to be able to do well and it still has that capability to be able to do well because uh, of that skill check. Then, as some of the other answers to Metal Gururumon, we have Bloom Lord Hydramon. So, uh, Bloom Lord Hydra is a pretty decent uh, check and answer to Metal Gururumon. It's not exactly the most ideal one, but if you could get into a Hydramon early enough before they could get into their combo, then you could utilize Hydramon's ability to try to control their flow and uh, stop and limit some of their actions, which could be pretty huge at uh, trying to uh, stall them out and ruin their overall game plan while you also are still just playing into your game plan on being able to utilize all of your different Digimon not only to be super aggressive once you have a wide enough field which you could do thanks to the Bloom Lord half of Bloom Lord Hydra and it was really just the Hydramon's uh, control package that helps put Metal Gurumon in check but uh, the Bloom Lord can still be very aggressive and have the ability to close out games kind of acting like a sword and shield where uh, Bloom Lord is the sword and Hydramon is the shield to do lots of various powerful things. You don't necessarily care about the piercing into the Gururumon matchup more specifically, but against the other decks in the field, it's still just a very strong and powerful deck that can do a lot and have a very wide board state very quickly. So you could uh, kind of snowball things out of control in your favor. And then the last deck of the top tier decks is going to be the weakest one based on all of the different data points, but it's still strong enough uh, to be able to uh, take the top tier slots. So uh, WarGreymon X Antibody, if you actually just uh, think about these top decks alone, it is a really good uh, check deck for security control, just because it, you have built in uh, protection against a lot of different deletion based effects, on top of the fact that uh, you have uh, the ability to turn off the opponent's security threats so it just helps uh, farm the security control players that are trying to farm the Gururumon players on top of the fact that it is also pretty decent into Metal Gururumon being at least a 50-50 just because you are still a high damage deck versus you know another high damage deck on top of the fact that they can't actually bounce you so they have to rely on alternative ways uh, like attacking into you if they're going to even have any shot of clearing your Digimon otherwise you're just going to use your Digimon to punch really 
hard once and then sit on the field if you didn't kill them with an Omnimon to be super oppressive with it just because they might not be able to deal with your Digimon while trying to aggress at the same time. So it just kind of is a good deck to try to round out to what these top tier decks are and keep some of the other decks in check while still having some pretty decent plays of its own. And then moving into the second category, it's going to be the tournament worthy decks. So the tournament worthy decks are the decks that still are going to be showing up. They had a pretty decent uh, meta percentage compared to everything else when it wasn't being eaten up by the top tier decks. So uh, these decks uh, tend to recur in the lower half of top 16s. Sometimes they get a little bit higher, but uh, regardless, they're still just a very viable and very playable decks because, you know, that's what makes them tournament worthy. So uh, as far as uh, what we got in this category, we have uh, Yellow Hybrids. So Yellow Hybrids, even with uh, the Jet Selfie nerf, is still a very annoying deck just because there's a lot of different ways that we could approach the deck. We could approach the deck either Yellow Red or Yellow Blue. Yellow Blue is going to use uh, Shikuamon as that alternative way to just Digivolve and recover generically. Then you have uh, the Red stuff, uh, which is going to be either... A splash of red hybrids or it's going to be the shine package then you have a card like venusmon which is really good into decks uh, like metal gurumon that are relying a lot on wind digivolving abilities and security attack plus one to be able to deal damage and a card like that just really puts them off of their game plan which is kind of is what making the deck at tournament worthy on top of the fact that your game plan is still just very simple on setting up a wide field of hybrids chipping at the opponent's security and then once you have enough memory you're just going to be having a really big swing turn. Then Mastimon kind of is in that same style of boat where it is just to trying to do its own thing still. It still can be a very snowball-y deck when it goes off. It has some decent recovery and it has some decent removal plan to put any OTK deck off their damage count uh, while still having access at some really powerful cards. So it's just a very uh, nice uh, versatile deck that can do lots of different things in the meta against a lot of different other meta decks. And then the next deck on the list is going to be Imperial Jamon. So this is the blue-green version of Imperial Jamon. The red-purple one hasn't put any results up anywhere outside of Japan, and even in Japan, it didn't put up that great of results. So it is just more of a meme deck, and blue-green is proven to be the stronger variant of the two Imperial Jamon decks, just because it is more of a mid-range deck that has the adaptability to be able to deal lots of damage and have a nice solid DNA style game plan where you're relying a lot on your level fives to be able to do lots of damage then you're only going up into your level sixes to kind of extend your combo to be able to do more the jamming really helps with adding protection against uh, potential security threats that aren't options so it's not like your swings are bad and the deck is highly consistent making it still one of the better decks in the game. Then on top of that, uh, we have the, the next deck, which is going to be Gaiomon, which is basically just a slightly weaker version of Black War Greymon in this meta more specifically, just because we're not in a go-wide tamer-heavy format, just because, well, Crosshearts was that threat, and now that threat is no longer available, so it just makes uh, playing uh, Black War Greymon a little bit worse because it doesn't have as high of a damage output uh, as uh, War Greymon does. But uh, two other interesting decks that are in the tournament-worthy category is going to be Dorbikmon. So this is going to be more specifically Dorbikmon OTK, just because, well, it's another OTK deck where it just deals a lot of damage out of nowhere, and if the opponent doesn't necessarily have the uh, particular tools to be able to answer this style of deck, then once they find all of their parts and pieces, they just combo off and then the game is over. So it is just another OTK style of deck, but it's not relying on a Digimon out of raising, so they're there is some other interesting uh, lines of play that you could uh, play around versus some of the raising plays. So one of those uh, things that you could play around that uh, decks out of raising can't is going to be uh, Eximon. So Eximon being the last deck on this tournament worthy list it really kind of helps uh, try to check uh, decks that want to move out of raising to be able to deal lots of damage. So uh, Eximon kind of helps shut that off with his goading type of ability. So the idea behind uh, the goading type of ability is they remove out of raising. Once you're set up with your Eximon and you have the goaded type of ability with uh, some blocking ability to it, then you're forcing the opponent to attack the second they move out of raising, and that really can ruin their overall game plan and style of deck just 
because now you're shutting off the ability for them to be able to digivolve up into their higher stages and they need to rely on having alternative bodies on the field which Examon can help it clean up as easily as well. So he's just another control style of deck that's trying to keep these uh, out of raising OTK decks in check. And then uh, the next uh, category is going to be the tournament contender category. So tournament worthy and tournament contender in terms of uh, data wise, they're very, very close in power. You could almost combine the two if you really wanted to, just because there's not that much separating them. But uh, for whatever reason, the tournament contenders do a little bit worse and aren't as good in this meta as the tournament worthy ones, which is why I, it's separated into two categories. But uh, as far as the decks inside, of the tournament contenders it's really no surprise seeing these types of decks here just because they're still very strong decks and all of these decks still do have the capability of winning so uh, we have Alphamon even with the nerf Alphamon is still just a very powerful deck you do have to adapt the deck into uh, utilizing different tools outside of relying on uh, Doru Greymon to add the extra punch uh, to make it an OTK deck and protection to you know stop the opponent from being able to interact with with you so uh, without that tool it does shift the deck and make the deck a little bit worse but it doesn't necessarily mean the deck is borderline unplayable and it still has very powerful plays that it can do to try to disrupt the opponent and deal lots of damage just because it still has access to almost every other tool that it has on top of uh, all the other tools that black as a whole have and then the second deck uh, on the tournament contenders is going to be Grandis Kawagamon. So Grandis Kawagamon is still just your classic OTK style of deck, but it does have more checks and counters in this meta than it did in the previous meta. And then as far as another deck in the tournament contender list that actually has been doing well because of the new support, it's going to be Gallimon X Antibody. So Gallimon X Antibody hasn't really put up any results before this, and the new cards definitely added to his overall power and potential, but he's still just one of the weaker X Antibody decks, but he does have lots of flexibility on how you could approach him, and he still has some pretty decent game plan to uh, punish the opponent for having Digimon by having either easy access at deleting them, and uh, he can still deal lots of damage when they don't have Digimon on the field as well. He's just a pretty decent deck, but he just doesn't necessarily have the speed and consistency compared to some of the other X antibody based decks. Then, as far as some of the other tournament contender decks, D-Brigade also is another deck that got a lot of new tools in EX3, uh, but the majority of them aren't necessarily super useful because it is a go-wide rookie rush style of deck, and the new tools want you to actually try to build up and digivolve, which is just slowing down the deck overall. So, a lot of the decks actually started cutting out a lot of the new tools, and they're just utilizing maybe the level 4 and uh, the new level 3. So, it hasn't necessarily changed changed that much, but the changes and additions that it did get still make the deck a very threatening deck because it still just applies lots of early game pressure, which some decks might not be able to deal with. And then the next deck that's going to be in the tournament contender list is going to be Magnamon X Anibody or Armor Rush. So Armor Rush really hasn't seen any new support, but it's still just a pretty powerful and aggressive deck in the meta just because uh, Magnamon X Anybody could shut off a lot of potential aggro while you're utilizing a lot of your level 4s to be hyper aggressive with, and it does have some pretty explosive plays, especially now thanks to the inclusion of Jessmon GX as a really good level 7 to take advantage of in combination with Magnamon. So it's still just doing the same thing it's always been, but because it wasn't necessarily necessarily a super top tier contender in some of the other formats from BT9 and BT10, it's still just not performing as well as it could in EX3 because EX3 essentially is just a BT9 2.0. And then uh, the last uh, tournament contender deck is going to be Blue Flares. So uh, Blue Flares is a really strong deck against go wide decks. Any deck that's uh, building a single stack and raising, it has a really hard time with just because it's acting like Blue Hybrids 2.0, where it's trying to take advantage of the opponent having a wide field to be able to turn a lot of your effects and abilities online, which is why uh, it's not necessarily doing as well as it could be. And if the best deck in the format is Metal Gurumon, and that's what you're more often likely to see then it's only going to be having one digimon on the field at a time which puts a, a deck like blue flares at a huge disadvantage because it can't play to its own strengths 
And then as far as the last category, which is the rogue category, this is usually where I would just put everything else just because this literally is where everything else would go. I think there's still just a lot of very viable and playable decks in the overall meta. But uh, some decks are obviously performing better than others, and if you're taking a deck into this type of environment, then you really need to be prepared for the top four decks, and it's really hard to prepare for at least two of the top four decks because you're either getting controlled out by Bloomlord and uh, Security Control, which has its own sets of strengths and weaknesses that you have to cater your deck towards, which means you can't necessarily cater your deck towards the other top tier decks, which is going to be... Uh, Garurumon X Antibody and uh, Greymon X Antibody. But as far as uh, some other deck set that we could highlight based on the data, we do have uh, Blue Hybrids, which is still surprisingly able to do well in this type of environment, so just because, again, it's another hybrid based deck where you're just trying to sit on your tamers. There's not as much tamer hates it in the format because Skyomon isn't doing as well, and there's still just not a lot of ways to be able to interact with tamers. And if they Death X you, you don't care because you're not really playing Digimon. You're just sitting on your tamers, and then you're just going to accrue lots of value off of your tamers. And the opponent ideally having Digimon like Blue Flares to be able to uh, gain lots of resources and to uh, generate a whole bunch of memory to make some really big swing turns. Then we also have Ancient Greymon OTK or Red Ancient Hybrid OTK, whatever you want to label the deck. It's essentially just using Ancient Greymon to build a really powerful and big stack, move them out of raising and swing for all of the opponent's security, then Blitz Omni for the game. So that's essentially the whole core game plan, but Dorbikmon is doing basically the same thing but better and faster. So Dorbikmon is kind of just taking up that slot and there's less punishment in this meta for hard playing Dorbikmon than there is for moving Ancient Greymon out of Raising. So it is just a little bit harder to utilize Ancient Greymon than Dorbikmon, which is why it's still a pretty decent OTK deck, just not as good of an OTK deck as some of the others on this list. Then Dark Knightmon being basically a pseudo unkillable Digimon is still pretty decent at applying lots of different pressure and having the ability to also try to wall out the opponent by using your Nene to turn all of your level 5s and 6s into blockers, which is pretty good and can be pretty annoying, but it still has its shortcomings and isn't as strong as some of the other decks on this list. Then that kind of is the sentiment uh, with uh, D Reapers. D Reapers has its own baked in package and it doesn't necessarily have that many other tools. And with decks still wanting to play out of raising and be a single stack deck, the inclusion of Death X isn't really helping the deck be any stronger than it was before. So uh, just because it wasn't doing as well in some of those previous metas means that it's not doing as well in this meta just because we're not a go wide meta as much as we thought we would be. Then uh, we also have Beale Star, which is another really good deck, but it's basically just a weaker version of Security Control, where you have lots of really big, powerful options. You could hard play your Digimon for super cheap, but it does have some setup, and in the meantime, you at least could try to be as aggressive as you can with it. You are at level 4s and below, so it's not like it's that bad of a deck compared to Security Control. It's just uh, if your security is off and you can't deal with the opponent's Digimon, then you do just kind of auto-lose, and especially against a deck like a Wargreymon X Antibody, where you literally have zero options to be able to handle that type of a card, means that uh, you're just going to have a harder time in the meta overall, because that is going to be one of the more played and more powerful decks. But yeah, for the most part, this is just my interpretation on how I read all of the data. And uh, this is kind of where the meta is. I don't necessarily think the meta is going to change that much outside of this. The top tier decks are the decks that you're going to have to prepare for. And those are the decks that are more likely to win than all of the other decks below. And it seems like the more and more events that we have, the more and more it's consolidating towards the top. Just because people want that more guaranteed success. And they'd rather learn the top tier decks than try to fight it out with a deck that isn't as strong across the field as uh, what the top tier here is. But do I necessarily think this is a bad or unhealthy meta? I don't necessarily think it's that bad or unhealthy. I think it is a little bit boring just because the meta really hasn't changed since BT9. I said before that this is basically uh, BT9 2.0 or 3.0, depending on how you want to look at it, just because BT10 was a pretty short meta, so I don't necessarily count that as a full meta, and this is just a more full meta than what BT10 was. 
But uh, regardless, uh, the fact that uh, not a whole lot has changed and, and uh, the meta hasn't really shaken up that much uh, just means that uh, it can be a little bit boring at times. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link. So when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook. So when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zunitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.